This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the new Sidekick 4G on T-Mobile. Gone is the operating system created by Danger, and instead we have Android here on the phone is made by Samsung rather than Sharp, but it's sort of a modern reinterpretation of the Sidekick, and it's a pretty nice and powerful phone, especially for $99 with contract. As you can see here, I have it in standard landscape mode, where it's an 800-480 pixel uh, Android phone. 3.5 inch display, not super AMOLED, but for 99 bucks you're not going to get that fancy. However, it's a pretty nice, sharp and clear display. They've customized Android a bit. You can see you've got phone app contacts here, which is not such an unusual choice to see on an Android phone, but it's got a very different stylized look. They were trying to come up with some distinctive themes here to make it a bit sidekick-like. In fact, the initial theme that was on here was cheap, kind of very dreary feature phone, I thought, so I changed it to something a little bit more jazzy, but... Overall, I like the skinning of Android. It's not TouchWiz, like you see on a Samsung Vibrant or a Captivate, for example. It's definitely a more toned-down user interface enhancement. But hey, it's a sidekick, right? On the fact that it's large. Kind of plasticky, but very sturdy. Feels good in the hand, by the way. 3 megapixel camera up here. You're not going to get fancy, fancy stuff again on this. It's your speaker grill. Hold back, pulls off to reveal a 1500 milliamp battery. So it's looking kind of sidekick-like. You've got these interpretations of the shoulder button. Accelerometer you can turn on and off, but if you give it a push, there you go. Sidekick action style opening of the phone to reveal the keyboard. I'll take a look at the back here. It's a very nice spring-loaded mechanism, and this is a, a good quality hinge. It's also attractive looking. Probably a step up from the old sidekicks. And while we're looking up here, you can see this is the micro USB port, and this is your camera button right here. So here we go. This is definitely very much a Sidekick style keyboard and it is excellent to type on. Plenty of key spacing, nice and clicky. Kind of bubbly keys you can see here. And for those of you who are still accustomed to the Sidekick and haven't already moved on, you're going to be used to having these big shoulders in the way of typing, which aren't so bad as long as you have reasonably long fingers. Shoulder buttons over here, they're enjoyable. The problem is this phone does have a lot of buttons and I find I keep hitting them by accident. It's a little bit annoying. There's standard Android buttons, plus a jump button, something also brought over from the Sidekick days, on your shoulders. They're stylized, though, so you might not recognize them at first. That's the Android menu button. This is your back button. This is your home button, and this is the jump key. And here you can see it's offering to give me a selection of things on screen, or I can hold the jump key plus an assigned letter. So for gallery, for example, it's the jump key plus G to launch gallery. That's pretty handy. And you can hit back to get out of that. You can see the home screen functions in landscape and portrait modes both. And there are seven home screens. And something that's a little bit different is if you don't want all those home screens, you can actually remove some of them. And you can rearrange them. So we've got music player, wireless controls, Google search up here, news and feeds. Sticky messaging is interesting. If you get a text message and it has something important on there, like directions to get to some place, you can hit a little button in the text message and turn it into a sticky message, and it'll be right up here. Also, you can see the little LED has been flashing here occasionally, and you can get different LED notifications or text messages, email messages, and missed calls, and you can set the color for those, too. Not bad. Beyond that, we have standard Froyo here, Android OS 2.2. If we hit the Apps button, you'll see a pretty standard presentation of Android applications that you see on a phone normally. And while we're looking at the icons here, you can see there's a little color bar that indicates which screen of applications you're on. It's like TouchWiz in that it uses a side-to-side -side scrolling alphabetical listing of applications. And you've got all your standard apps on here. You've got the Android Market, you've got Google Maps, Google Navigation, Google Places, Gmail, Gtalk, all of the good stuff is there plus some T-Mobile added apps as well, which include T-Mobile TV, which we'll show you in a minute, and we've also got some Samsung stuff here, which includes their mini diary that we've seen on phones like the Vibrant. We've got Media Room, which is a central media place for all the multimedia functions, or most of them on the phone, and you've got Samsung's Media Hub, where you can buy and rent TV shows and movies to download and watch on the phone. Speaking of downloading, this is a Sidekick 4G because it has HSPA plus 4G. That's tw uh, 21 megabit per second standard. And we've had very good download speeds with this phone, averaging 5.5 megs down and 1 meg up with a, just a moderate signal. And in our area, that's, that's pretty good. We've also got DLNA All Share here. That's Samsung's version of uh, 
media sharing over Wi-Fi networks. You've got Amazon MP3, T-Mobile's app pack, suggested applications, and Samsung's Drive Smart. And since this is a sidekick, you've got to have some social networking. Now, there's not really a lot of custom apps to that other than a group text messaging function, which is pretty interesting. But we've got the standard Facebook client installed and standard Twitter client installed as well on the phone. While we're talking about texting, it does have threaded text messaging, and it also has a cloud text feature, cloudtext.sidekick.com, where you can send and receive SMS messages using a web browser on a computer rather than your phone if you wish, and you can back up your text messages from your phone. So a little bit of that client-server feel that we have from the sidekick there. In terms of hardware, it's a pretty capable phone, certainly for $99. It's got a 1 gigahertz Hummingbird CPU, just like the Samsung Vibrant Captivate Galaxy S phones. You've got an 8 gig card that comes with the phone for storage, and of course you can use a larger card as well. The 3 megapixel camera on the back, and we've got a VGA video conferencing camera up front that works with the included Quick software, which is what T-Mobile usually bundles with their Android phones that do indeed have front-facing cameras. Call quality on the phone is very good, um, loud and clear, surprisingly so on both ends. A real pleasure to use. And reception is, is pretty solid, too. I'd say it's a bit better than your average in terms of reception. Not super duper, but it's pretty good. And the phone, though large, it feels really good in hand. It's not one of those thin, pretty, slippery plastic phones that are so popular these days. It's, it's really nice to hold in hand, and feels pretty sturdy, too, from the hinge mechanism to the plastics that are used. Again, it, it doesn't scream, I'm expensive, but it feels like it's going to last. You've got your 3.5 millimeter stereo jack up here, and you've got the standard Android Music Player plus that media app that we're going to take a look at now. I'll take a look at the Media Room app. You got a Slacker radio tab. We have music over here, and you can have the usual playlists, albums, songs, that kind of thing. Let's take a look at the song interface. Don't have any album art for these. If we did, you would see it over here. So we'll just pick something and play it. Good speaker on this, good loudspeaker. Also good for driving. If I hadn't shot Cordelia, she was low down and traveling. So that's the music player, and that is the speaker. And for video, we've got T-Mobile TV shortcut right here, the usual YouTube player as well. And we'll take a look at T-Mobile TV, which also has its separate icon as well. And if you do it through this, you have to pick subcategories of T-Mobile TV. We're going to go with live TV right now. We've got both live and on-demand stuff available for $10 a month. There's a 30-day trial. As is reminding me, I'm on a trial. And you can get full TV episodes and stuff like that. We're testing this out over T-Mobile's HSPA Plus 4G network. So you've got your channel selector over here, and then I'll switch and stretch the full screen once it's buffered up. So definitely pretty nice quality, and it plays just fine on the phone. Fast CPU and fast networking. Here's the lock screen, which tells you what time it is using a text. And also, you can see here that if you swipe down versus swipe up, there's going to be a difference. Swiping down just opens the phone, and it's also telling me I've got five text messages over here. If you swipe up, you can launch jump keys, and if I had a jump key assigned, I could have chosen some apps to immediately launch when I turn on the phone, or wake it up rather from sleep. That's pretty cool. Also down here, we have an optical D-pad, something that's been going away lately on Android phones, but we still have it here. The phone also has Wi-Fi calling, which is a pretty neat feature if you're out of reception zone. You can use Wi-Fi instead to make a call. You will be charged minutes for doing that, though. It's not free to use Wi-Fi for making calls, but it is a good alternative if you're in a poor coverage area. It has a GPS. It works with Google Nav and with Telenav. Telenav is a pay-for subscription monthly that you can add and drop at any time you want. GPS works quite well in this. We had no problems getting a fix or getting good directions on the phone. So all in all, it's a responsive phone. It's a little bit faster, actually, than Samsung's TouchWiz phones because this user interface is a little bit more lightweight. It's solid. It has great call quality and one heck of an excellent keyboard. That's the T-Mobile Sidekick 4G. Visit Mobile Tech Review to read the full review.